If you haven't yet connected a receptor to your computer, you must do so before using Uniwire. If you're connecting a receptor directly to your computer, plug one end of a crossover Ethernet cable into receptor and the other end into your computer. Make sure that you use a crossover Ethernet cable and not a standard or straight through cable. Set receptor to crossover mode, shut down receptor and your computer, and then turn on your computer, wait for it to boot completely, and then turn on receptor. Now if you're connecting receptor to an Ethernet switcher, then use a standard or straight through Ethernet cable, set receptor to either auto DHCP or manual IP mode, and then shut down receptor and restart it. Now this was just a cursory overview of networking, so if you feel like you need more information, there are dedicated receptor networking videos you can watch, or you can read about networking in your receptor documentation. Before using receptor with Uniwire, you'll need to install the Uniwire plugin on your host computer. You'll be guided through the process by the installer application itself. If you haven't already done so, you should also install the receptor remote application on your host computer. This will allow you to edit Receptor's graphical user interface directly from your computer, and there are direct links between the Uniwire plugin and the Receptor Remote application. After installing Receptor Remote and the Uniwire plugin on your host computer, you'll need to configure Receptor itself to use Uniwire. You can do this from your computer using the Receptor Remote application, or from a dedicated keyboard, mouse, and monitor plugged directly into Receptor, or you can use Receptor's front panel. If you're looking at Receptor's graphical interface, click the Setup tab, and in the Uniwire section of the Setup page, click Enable Uniwire to put a check next to it. This will turn Uniwire on for this Receptor. Notice when you turn on Uniwire that several other setup options become disabled. Specifically, when Uniwire is enabled, Receptor slaves to the master sample rate used by your computer. Similarly, Receptor automatically sets its sample buffer size to match the value that's defined in your host sequencer. Additionally, Receptor gets its sample clock from Uniwire unless you enable Receptor's audio and MIDI ports, which we'll discuss later. You'll also note that Uniwire is, by default, the new MIDI tempo source, which means that any synchronized effects like low-frequency oscillators or arpeggiators or digital delays will lock to your host sequencer's tempo. However, if you wish, you may override this default setting. Now, you'll notice that once you've enabled Uniwire, there are two additional options available. Let's look at the first one, called Enable Receptor Audio and MIDI I.O. When this parameter is unchecked, like it is here, then Receptor will ignore its own physical audio and MIDI ports. In this mode, your host computer is in complete control of Receptor. You use the audio and MIDI interfaces connected to your computer, and all audio and MIDI communications between your computer and Receptor are transferred over the Ethernet cable. This essentially makes Receptor's plugins and its CPU an extension of your host computer. This mode is the ideal choice for composers and producers who route all MIDI and audio into their host computer's interfaces and who wish to keep their computer as the center of their musical world. When this parameter is checked, like it is now, then both your computer and Receptor's built-in audio and MIDI capabilities are enabled. Now this mode is ideal for performers who want to use Receptor's high-quality audio circuitry instead of, or in addition to, their computer's audio and MIDI interfaces. This is a very powerful feature of Uniwire, but there are a couple of caveats. First, because there are essentially two active audio interfaces, they will need to be clocked to each other. For this reason, if you choose to enable Receptor's audio and MIDI interfaces, you should connect a SPDIF cable between your host computer and Receptor, and then slave one of the two devices to the SPDIF clock. Also, because there are two different sources and destinations for MIDI data, users must take a bit more care to understand the signal flow in their studios. The second option is called Bypass MIDI Filter on Single Channels. Now when this option is checked, as shown here, then Uniwire can target a virtual MIDI port on any of its 73 plug-in slots or 19 mixer channels, and data is routed to those virtual MIDI ports using the host sequencer's MIDI channel assignments. In order for this to happen, Receptor's own internal channel-specific MIDI filtering needs to be bypassed. Doing this ensures that Receptor works with your host sequencer exactly like a native plug-in would work with it, and, as such, this option is checked by default. If you uncheck the option, Receptor will apply its own internal MIDI filtering to any virtual ports you select in the Uniwire plugin. Now this can give power users more finely tuned control over MIDI signal routing, including use of Receptor's own keyboard zoning features, but it does require a more thorough understanding of your studio's MIDI configuration. 
Both of these options are discussed in greater detail in your Uniwire documentation, so take a look there if you need to learn more. Now, as I mentioned previously, you can access all these Uniwire parameters from Receptor's front panel as well. For example, to enable Uniwire using Receptor's front panel, press the Setup button, rotate the top display knob until Uniwire is displayed in the top line, and then rotate the bottom display knob to enable Uniwire. Rotate the top display knob to select the various additional Uniwire options, and rotate the bottom display knob to change any of their settings. The next video in this series will discuss how to instantiate the Uniwire plugin in your sequencer and how to use that plugin to communicate with Receptor.